Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where John Coleman and I are getting all sorts of interesting information about how we can stay healthier from Dr. Liz Lister. Hi, Dr. Liz. Hi there. Dr. Liz, you, you are our go-to person for all things medical and health. And you've been kind enough over the last couple of years to answer what I consider some dumb questions. Um, and you always have great answers. It makes me feel good because they're not, and I, then I realized maybe the question wasn't so dumb. So I have another dumb question for you. Okay, <laughs> I'm ready. I keep hearing about homeopathy. Mm -hmm. Now we've talked about different modes of medicine and I'm assuming you'll know what homeopathy is. What is it and yes. do I care? Well, I can't answer the question about do you care, but I definitely can answer <laughs> the question of what it is. So if you think of, first of all, if you think of the word homeo meaning the same and pathy referring to the illness. Okay, so ah. homeopathy is a way of treating illnesses that's been around for several centuries. Uh, it was originally developed in the late 1700s by a German physician uh, named Samuel Hahnemann. And he, at the time, uh, had heard about this and explored the idea that if you take the offending cause of an illness and you give it to a person in small amounts, you can then provoke the, the body, the human body, to create its own healing response. Wait, is that like a vaccine? Concept? Okay, that's very interesting and good question because this was a lot of the thinking at the time and it did lead, th these ideas led to the development of vaccines. But homeopathy is, is different uh, because it's more based on symptoms than cause. Okay, so for example, when you have a vaccine, you need to know the cause of the illness. Yeah. If you have a, a chickenpox vaccine, you need to be able to say chickenpox causes this illness and you take that organism and then you make the vaccine. Homeopathy is different because it's focusing on the symptoms. Okay, so here's an example. When you have allergies, your eyes water, right? Right. And where's another place that your eyes water? Maybe when you're chopping a red onion. Yeah. So red onion is used in homeopathic remedies to stimulate these. The idea is that it's going to help allergies because the body's going to come up with its response and ability to control the symptom. So does this work? Okay, that's a very good question, and it's a controversial question. So remember I said it was developed 1796-ish, late, late 1700s. Yeah. In the 1800s, it's pretty popular. Now let's compare to the other treatment modalities that were available at the time, like leeches. <laughs> okay, so homeopathy looked better. It looked more promising at the time, and there were schools of homeopathy in Europe and even in the U.S. in the 1820s. And it had a pretty good run in the 1800s, but then it started to fall out of favor. We had the, the organism theory, the development of the microscope. We're starting to find germs. Sure. Starting to see the causes of illnesses. And so homeopathy really lost a lot of favor. And by the, about 1920, they closed down the last homeopathic study program in the U.S., Oh. Fast forward, right? So fast forward to the 1970s. So looking between the 1920 and 1970, that was really a time of huge scientific development and really leaning and emphasizing science. Then we get to the 70s, and there's a resurgence of interest in homeopathy because people want more natural approaches. Ah. Okay? So it became more... Uh, interest developed, uh, expressed in homeopathy, and then it had a few more decades. However, I'm gonna tell you that now the scientific community is 
pretty much not convinced. All right, there's a few, there's a few principles of homeopathy that really don't mesh with the current scientific thinking. For example, that the more you dilute the offending agent, right, like whatever that ingredient is, like say the red onion, the more you dilute it, the idea is that the stronger it is for homeopathy. And this ah. just does not mesh with the current uh, scientific theories that we now really hold on to very tightly. For example, where we know an illness is caused by a particular infectious organism, for example. Yeah. All right. So this is, you know, I've grown up these last few decades. Argentina, where my family is, is very into homeopathy and these alternative types of approaches. And there's a particular brand, France. It was a very, very big uh, set of products, homeopathic products for different symptoms and different issues in Europe. However, little by little, as recently as last year, even in France, where there's this big company that makes a lot of homeopathic products, they've withdrawn public funding. So 10 years ago in France, for example, you could get a homeopathic remedy covered on your insurance. Now you cannot. Um. So it's a little, it's pretty much on the outs right now, although I definitely know patients who really feel strongly about it. At this point in time, most scientists consider that the benefits of it are from the placebo effect. Uh. The human body can do sure. a lot of curing and healing. Yeah. And it, when we set our mind to curing and healing the body, uh, we could really see amazing results. And so for better or worse, depending on how much you, if you've tried homeopathy, homeopathic remedies, uh, if you really believe strongly in it, it, and of course the placebo effect is always very hard to, to tease out. So it sounds, yeah. it sounds a little bit as if um, the way you're describing it, and not that it doesn't have uh, positive effect for some people, as you say, for the placebo effect. It sounds like it's a little bit more, in your mind, snake oilish, as opposed to. Yes. Uh, in other words, if if you were really ill, and you put yourself into a, a regimen of only homeopathic cures, you might not be doing yourself a huge favor. Definitely not of time to get rid of the standard medical approaches. I love when people use alternative approaches in, com in combination. Uh, yeah. More standard medical care. Let's use the, all the knowledge that we have. Sure. Uh, Dr. Liz, it sounds like homeopathy is not the same as, but somehow a, somehow related to uh, the the new trend in nutraceuticals. In other words, mm -hmm. taking uh, taking natural plants and their natural mm -hmm. um, their natural vitamins and their natural benefits. I, I think of let's say an orange has vitamin C. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of taking a vitamin C tablet, squeeze an orange. All right, that's kind of the nutraceutical approach. But that's not the same as homeopathy. Homeopathy would be trying to take that as a cure that's as right. opposed to a supplement. That's exactly right. And it would be taking it down to very, very tiny, 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 tiny dilutions. Yeah. Even to the point where the original offending agent, for example, let's say you're trying to treat allergy to a certain plant and you have just a tiny, the tiniest amount of that plant. Okay, that, for example, bee stings. There's been homeopathic remedies where they crush the bees. Huh. But, but then they dilute it all the way down. And the idea is that ultimately the homeopathic remedy doesn't even have any of the original item like the bee or, or any of that in it at all. Uh, uh. Okay, but you're still getting the perhaps the idea. And these are words that are used in homeopathy, the essence of whatever it is. And of course, this is a little difficult for the scientific method to, to yeah. prove and demonstrate. So, yeah. 
It's a little, I don't personally consider it completely snake oil because I believe so strongly in the placebo effect. Right. If, somebody, <laughs> of course. if, she, if my patient's going to include homeopathy in what she's using, I'm not going to tell her not to because if it's going to help, then. Yeah. Then we're going to. As long as it does primarily, it does no harm. Correct. Okay. Exactly. Which I don't think it does. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I, I didn't really know what it was, but I've seen it talked about quite a bit. And um, now I know I can at least put it into the alternative uh, medicine that's category. Right. That's where it goes. Okay. Yeah. So I guess, so I, guess, I guess the final line, uh, phrase on this is let the patient beware. But if you're going to try something, make sure you also consult with your medical doctor. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.